Free agency is in full effect. It is time to do a mock draft. We got four rounds of action. This is not a mock draft either. This is what's going to happen. I'm telling you, I already know. <laughs> no, I don't. Maybe I do. Yeah, no, I don't. But uh, we're going to be doing a four round mock draft. What is cooling, by the way? I hope you guys are having a really good one. Sorry it's taking me so long to get to this mock draft. It's just a kind of a crazy weekend and at work and stuff like that. But all fun, man. We're having some fun. It's time to get into a mock draft. Starting with the number one overall pick. There are no trades in this one, but I will be doing trades here real soon. Caleb Williams, the number one selection. This one, Caleb Williams, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. He is going to be the number one pick. He is going to the Bears. He's going to be their franchise quarterback. Let's lock and low. Let's get excited for Bears-Packers rivalry to hit up a new stone. On to the Jaden Daniels pick. Or is it Drake May? Is it J.J. McCarthy? No, <laughs> who knows, but I'm going Jaden Daniels here, quarterback LSU. I think they're going to be looking for that mobility. I think that's going to be huge. I also think that they may steer away from North Carolina just in past priority picks, obviously. Look, hopefully that doesn't involve in their decision. It really shouldn't, right? I think Drake May is a totally different prospect. And for me, I still have Drake May a little bit above Jane Daniels. It is a very close race. I do think Jane Daniels has a little bit of a higher floor because of the athleticism. But I really like Drake May's processor over the middle of the field. I do worry about that a little bit with Jane Daniels. And that is where I could say he he could struggle a little bit, but he does have that beautiful deep ball, that athleticism that you love, and it's going to be that Houdini level, hopefully Houdini level. I mean, you know, Lamar Jackson, but you get your quarterback here, the number two overall pick, and then Drake May goes off the board into the New England Patriots. Could this be a trade spot? I know I'm hearing rumors. So are the, you know, the Minnesota Vikings going to find my whispering about the Minnesota Vikings going to come up and take their quarterback now that they got the 23rd overall pick? We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I am going to solidify the quarterback position here for the New England Patriots. I'm not passing on Drake May. I think he's got uber amounts of talent. And I cannot look past the blind eye of, you know, Jacoby Brissett and Blaley Zappi right now. I mean, look, I think Brissett's a capable quarterback. If you want to sit Drake May for half the season to even a full year, I'm down with that. I really am. Overall, I'm getting our quarterback of the future. On to Marvin Marvelous Harrison. Yes, Maserati Marv heads to Arizona. It's This one's another one. If he is on the board, this one is going to be a locked-in picked. And then on to the Chargers, which this team definitely could be on the move. I think there's a really good chance that they try to trade down in the draft. However, if they cannot trade down or if they don't want to trade down, there's a Really good player available, and his name is Malik Nabors. And I say it that way because it's for a good reason. The dude is a solidified stud, and you get yourself a dynamic piece, and maybe one of the reasons why they feel confident to trade Keenan Allen and also to to let go of Mike Williams is because they're picking at number five, and Malik Nabors is probably going to be on the board. And either Romo Dunze, Malik Nabors, go get one of those guys. I mean, Malik Nabors to me is is right there with Marvin Harrison and Romo Dunze even. This is receiving class. The top three is elite. All could be true number one weapons. On to the Roman Coliseum and the New York Giants are taking their number one receiver. We were just talking about Romo Dunze and he's no consolation prize in this receiving core. He's very good, and he can be a true number one. That's exactly what this Giants team needs. Now, I get it. You could be saying, what about the quarterback position? I understand. It's a tough situation. You're saying, well, Drew Locke can lead us to the... I don't know, but hey, I, you know, I'm not going to scuffle at nothing, but I'm ready to shuffle and ready to buff, but I don't know. But here we go. Romo Dunze is the pick for me. I just cannot pass on the talent. I like J.J. McCarthy. I really do. I just can't take him over Romo Dunze. On to Joe Olt, left tackle, future, plug him in right away. Joe Olt is a stone wall for Callahan. The Callahan's right there in the offense, and I, I just love this one. This is a perfect dream come true scenario. Then we go on to Dallas Turner for the Atlanta Falcons, and this is just BPA edge. I think that they need an edge rusher desperately, right? They weren't able to really get an edge rusher in free agency, and they, they got a quarterback instead, right? You got Kirk Cousins, so you got that checked off the box. Now let's go get the best edge available here, whether that's Dallas Turner, Leatu Latu, Jared Verse. Go snag one of those guys. And then we're also going edge rusher for the Chicago Bears, Jared Verse, at the number nine overall pick. And that's a lot of speed. That's a lot of power off your edge, and you get yourself a nice formidable defensive line too now with Gervin Dexter heading to year number two Andrew Billings around I mean you got some guys there on the defense line but Montez Sweat Jared Verse I'm feeling pretty confident Walker can rotate inside and out overall pretty dang strong pickings too on the interior and then on to the New York Jets I'm going super Bowers here I'm taking in a playmaker for this team 
definitely need a receiver. I do think they're going to be in the sweepstakes for Odell Beckham or somebody else. I mean, either which way. I mean, we need more help. So I'm going Brock Bowers to solidify another target. Line him up in the slot. Like, this guy is so versatile. I mean, he could line up on the outside and be a mismatch. A corner for some cornerbacks in the NFL. The dude is an unbelievable super weapon. And desperately what we need. Something we haven't had at the tight end position. And I don't remember the last time we had an elite tight end. And then on to the Minnesota Vikings. I'm going J.J. McCarthy. And as I was saying earlier, like, I'm a huge fan of J.J. McCarthy. He's actually my number two quarterback. I'm a huge fan. of. I, I really believe in this guy. I think when it's all said and done, he, to me, has one of the higher floors. I know people's always, a, you know, a boom-bust prospect. I actually really like his floor and what he's going to be at the next level. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be a year one guy. I just, I'll be real. I think he's going to take, you're going to have growing pains with this guy. So don't expect a Super Bowl ring early on. Don't expect playoffs, even with this playoffs. But don't expect that with with J.J. McCarthy. I think year three is really where J.J. McCarthy is going to come into his own. He needs the right court coaching. Absolutely. I think Kevin O'Connell is the perfect coach for him to unleash the tools that he has. So just give him some time. Let him develop. You obviously have elite wide receiving core and maybe you lean on the run game with Aaron Jones early on in his career. But I really do think the sky is the limit with J.J. McCarthy. And then on to number 12 in the Denver Broncos. I'm going with Terry and Arnold. He just, to me, feels like that Marshawn Lattimore pick for Sean Payton. Get that number one corner to pair along with Patrick Sertan, whether or not he's still around. I know you got trade rumors going along here, but I think this could be so many different picks. It could be a receiver. It could be Brian Thomas. It could be, I mean, it really could be any pick. You could go defensive line. It wouldn't shock me if they went after Byron Murphy. It wouldn't shock me, you know, Jerzon Newton. It wouldn't, you know, there's a lot of possibilities that this team could go with Quinion Mitchell, etc. But I think there's multiple areas that this team could be looking at besides quarterback, too. I'm not ready to lock in a quarterback for Sean Payton at this first overall pick. I just don't think they're going to force that. I think that they're going to take this in full lieu that they are in a little bit of a rebuild. And also with their cap situation, they're going to be better aligned next year to maybe take a quarterback because now they're going to have more money. They're going to have more draft picks. And that might make more sense to bring in a veteran. And we're talking maybe Ryan Tannehill or, you know, maybe just rock with Jared Stidham and, and roll with that and try to get yourself a top five pick. So I think there's a lot on the table for this Denver Broncos team besides just taking a quarterback. And then tell us if Vulaga for the Las Vegas Raiders. Just BPA offensive line. And I know all of his Sean is really good too, but I'm trying to find a right side guy. So uh, Talasi Fulaga brings that, whether that's the right guard position, whether you feel confident through Aaron Munford at the right tackle position, or you move him inside to guard. Talasi Fulaga, they compete at that right guard, right tackle position. On to Olaf Fushano. I can't pass up on the talent. I know he's small hands. Oh, he's got the T Rex arms. <laughs> I can't buy into that, man. When I watch him on tape, the dude is a stud. And I can I can deal with some of the run blocking limitations. They need a pass protector to cover Derek Carr's blind side. It was a problem, especially early on in the season. Andres Pete did a formidable job at the end of the year, but they need a long-term answer. Move Trevor Penning inside the guard. I feel like he can just, you know, be a butt kicker at that guard position. Let him do what he does with that power and that grit. Let Olu Fashanu be that pass protector blind side guy for your quarterback. Keep him upright. At least give Derek Carr a chance. On to Quinion Mitchell. Cornerback from Toledo, the Toledo Rockets. Should I call him Toledo Flash? Flash Mitchell? I don't know, something like that. But I am going to be taking a cornerback for the Indianapolis Colts to be that number one guy. You got him and Juju Brents, Kenny Moore. That's a really good secondary that I'm liking, man. On to the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going offensive line. Troy Fatanu fill in that left guard position for them. Fatanu with those movement skills, the lateral ability, and the hands, man. He's got super aggressive hands. I feel like he's just a plug and play left guard for them. Keep him out west as well. On to the Jaguars. I'm going with Kool-Aid McKistry. And I think McKistry's been so underrated at this point. He's not even going in first rounds in some mock drafts. To me, he is still a top 20 pick in the draft. I think he's got one of the highest floors in this cornerback room, if not the highest floor in the cornerback room. Just love what he brings from a press man situation. And Ryan Nielsen also going to probably want to play more press man. On to the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to Marius Mims. This is a tough one between him and J.C. Latham. I think both guys are top 15 picks for me on my big board. They're top 15 players. However, you know, you look at certain fits with teams and, and things like that. Players fall. Amarius Mims, the limited sample size could be big deterrent for a lot of teams. I think Amarius Mims, literally, if he can stay healthy, give him the Hall of Fame jacket. Give him the gold jacket. I think he can be that legit stonewall for Joe Burrow in the offensive line. Something that this team desperately needs at that right tackle position. I feel really, really confident on film that Amarius Mims, with the, even with the limited sample size, his film was some of the best out of all these tackles 
I can make, you can make the argument that he is the highest upside tackle in this class very easily. On to Leatu Latu, one pick. I know, I'm sorry, Rams. I do it over and over again. Maybe I should have changed it up and gone Byron Murphy. I know with the Aaron Donald retirement, I still think they're okay with Colby Turner in his emergence, man. I think that, you know, you got a stud there and, and Bobby Brown is a good, solid run defender. So I'm not like super worried about it either. Laurel Munchens, I mean, you got some, a little bit, you're going to need help or we're going to address it here at some point in this draft. But Leatu Latu, just too good. I can't pass him up. Then you move Michael Hoyt inside too, a little bit interior wise. On to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going JC Latham. Gotham Latham is finally off the board. As I talk about it with Amaris Mims, he's a top 15 pick in this class for me. Latham is such a talented player. And I, you know, he said, hey, stick me at left tackle stick me around I'm ready to go it doesn't matter you put Latham and Broderick Jones man that's a good tackle room that's gonna be a tough tackle room to get around man so much power with Latham as well gonna help you out in the run game too then on to the Miami Dolphins at 21 they lose Christian Wilkinson that's okay we're gonna go get Byron Murphy well it is tough loss but Byron Murphy supercharger in that interior defense line of Texas hook them horns and you get yourself that stud to be along with Zach Seiler I mean they lost Roquan Davis too so maybe you know I, I look I think they could go to Vondre Sweat. I like Byron Murphy, though. I'm taking him here at this point. Good value at 21. On to the Philadelphia Eagles. We're going Cooper DeGene, one that I do over and over again, but for good reason. This guy's an uber-versatile playmaker, and the Eagles right now are tough because... They've got so many guys going in that secondary right now. Like, their secondary, it's it's loaded to the gills and the cornerback position. you got a lot of youth, but it's like, who's going to be the guy, right? So Cooper DeGene could end up playing a slot. He could play safety for them. They need upgrades in their secondary in general. I think Cooper DeGene provides somewhere. Like, wherever your weak link is, put Cooper DeGene. I also think he can earn the trust of Vic Fangio quickly. And that's another thing. Earning the trust of Vic Fangio, especially as a rookie, is not easy to do. I think I think Cooper DeGene can do that. Not to mention he's going to be a great special teamer. On to Johnny Newton here. Jerzon, Johnny Newton. Dude is a just, he's one of those blue chip type of guys. And this is what I was saying with the Minnesota Vikings. Don't not so fast when it comes to trading up with this pick. Maybe they're trying to maneuver themselves to get an interior defensive lineman, right? I think that's really very much a possibility. Jumping in front of you know teams like the Cowboys could be in, an interesting scenario here to go get an elite interior defensive lineman with them. And, and they they lacked a lot of interior pass rush. So whether this is Byron Murphy, whether it's Johnny Newton, I think would be instrumental as that three tech next to Harrison Phillips on their interior defensive line. I mean, you bring in Jonathan Grenard, you got Andrew Van Ginkle. Now you add that pass rusher on the interior. On to the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU, the speedster, the vertical threat. If he can develop too, I mean, his overall game, like the guy's got elite number one wide receiver. I mean, you got C.D. Lamb, but I just felt like he was BPA. Receiver's kind of fallen in this draft, actually. Nonetheless, I'm going to take him. I mean, they did cut Michael Gallup. So you pair him along with C.D. Lamb for the future. And now long, Brandon Cooks is going to be there. So Brian Thomas also gives you that vertical threat too, that explosive element. Not that C.D. Lamb doesn't bring that. But anyway, Brian Thomas, add another explosive playmaker into this wide receiving core. On to Jackson Powers Johnson, center slash guard for the Green Bay Packers. And he comes in at least competes with Sean Ryan right away, okay, at that right guard position. And you know, long term, I'm thinking Josh Myers going into a contract year, will he be extended? So I think Jackson Powers Johnson just gives you that uber versatility, whether it's the center position long term, right guard position with some unfamiliar, you know, whether Sean Ryan's going to be the guy. I mean, you spent a premium pick on him, but no matter what, I think Jackson Powers Johnson will at least see the field early on and, and compete for one of those jobs. I feel like he can win. I, I, I feel confident he can win one of those spots. But in either which way, get yourself some depth on the interior and much needed help for the future. On to Chop Robinson, explosive edge to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to pair along with Yaya Diaby. I mean, two explosive edges, but they definitely need somebody else. And Joy Tryon Chayinka going into a contract year, you know, he hasn't quite been able to break out too much yet. I mean, he's, he's getting a little bit better, but overall, I still feel like they need more edge rush help to go along to with Anthony Nelson as, as a rotational player. And Chop Robinson has so much upside, man. 
on to Nate Wiggins to the Arizona Cardinals. And I'm going to go get themselves that number one corner. And they bring in Sean Murphy Bunting, so this doesn't necessarily become as big of a need. But I just feel like this was a great value. Get one of those top five corners. Nate Wiggins, the one that fell to you. And he could even play in the slot if you want to move Garrett Williams to the outside next season. I mean, you figure it out, right? Garrett Williams, keep him in the slot. Do what you want to do. Sean Murphy Bunting and Nate Wiggins on the outside. Like, now you got yourself a really nice cornerback duo. Much improved. And then on to the Buffalo Bills. I'm going Tyler Newbin. I'm just going to go and take our safety here of the future. He you plug him in right away and look cam lewis gives you some depth but i think tyler newbin is a day one starter in that back end and much needed improvement get younger and, and newbin as i was saying i think he's just one of those guys in this draft class that he's a pro bowler like he's one of those dudes where i feel really confident he's gonna be a really really good football player in the back end so instinctual has enough athleticism to get the job done and gonna be a leader in that back end for this team on to Kingsley Sumate. Yes, I'm going with Panay Sewell's cousin. It just makes so much sense. And he fits this offensive line to a do a T. He reminds me so much of like in terms, I mean, there's some differences, don't get me wrong, but to a Tyler Smith type of upside and prospect. While I do think Graham Barton has a higher floor, I think Kingsley Suomatea is his upside, is a all-pro level. Not that Graham Barton does have that level, but I think Suomatea has all-pro written all over him with the right development. Get him with good old Hank in this offensive line, Hank and Tank, but no, man, they got some good players. There. Hank Fraley is a great offensive line coach, and Kingsley Suomatea can be that working piece, and you know he's, you know, with the, their family relations, he's going to have some motivation here too, so I just feel like he's a lot through and through on to Tyler Guyton right tackle plug him in there's gonna be some growing pains here but the Baltimore Ravens desperately need a right tackle now with Morgan Moses going on to the New York Jets so you get yourself Tyler Guyton here at the end of the first round with those athletic traits and upside that he brings on to Graham Barton Duke offensive lineman left tackle there Duke moves inside here for this 49er team they need offensive interior help desperately whether he competes at center with Jake Brendel or at that right guard position with John Feliciano slash Aaron Banks can move over to right guard. You figure that out. You're your best five offensive line in their right position. And Graham Barton is a phenomenal prospect. We go on to A.D. Mitchell to finish out the first round. A.D. Mitchell, speaking of phenomenal. Dude, he to me is a top 20 player in this draft class. And once again, receivers fell a little bit in this draft. That's okay. A.D. Mitchell. I mean, the production wasn't quite there from what you would want to see from a top 20 pick. But the talent is there. This guy moves differently for dude six foot two and I didn't think he was going to weigh in at 205 but the Chiefs now have Hollywood Brown, Raji Rice, and A.D. Mitchell. Receiver problem over. It's out the window. It's gone man and Brett Beach has done this man. He's he typically attacks a position when it's a big time need once in free agency and then once or twice in the draft so I think that's what he you know I still think there's a good possibility they go receiver in the first round I mean there's some other areas depending if Legere Steen does get traded and there's rumors going on right now but for me it's too early to speculate on that on to round number two I'm going Zach Frazier center from West Virginia I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off this offensive line now you have an elite offensive line I mean you go ahead and pay Damian Lewis you pay Robert Hunt you get Zach Frazier you got your tackles with Kenny Kenokwanu and Tyler Moten so now you have an offensive line where there's just no excuses to help protect your quarterback you have depth Austin Corbett We'll see if he can get healthy slash Brady Christensen. And, and whether or not, I mean, those guys can play center. I just don't know at this point. So that's why I'm going Zach Frazier. I feel confident. He is a day one starter. Plug him in right away. And you got a good offensive line. On to the New England Patriots. They need a left tackle desperately. Grin Amagaji. And you might still be saying, you don't probably see him a lot early in mock drafts. And that's okay. So you might think this is a reach. But Amagaji's tape is phenomenal, man. Yes, he's on a smaller school, Yale. They don't play the biggest of competition. I would have loved to have seen him in the senior ball process, obviously dealing with an injury. But this guy's athletic traits and his length at 36-plus inch arms, it has all the makings of an elite left tackle at the next level. And it's a matter of just the right development. So I'm going to go ahead and plug him in there next to Cole Strange at that left side and be the blind side protector for Drake May. And yes, you probably need to bring in a free agent too. And, and you know, we'll see if McDermott, I mean, you need upgrades there. So on to Cooper BB. Kansas State, left guard, you plug him in right away. Elijah Wilkinson is back, but I like him more as a backup. And Cooper Beebe can plug in as a day one starter for them and keep Kyler Murray protected on the interior. Then we got Lad McConkey. This was just a BPA scenario. I did think about uh, Keon Coleman because of the size, especially as like that vertical threat on the outside. 
that is a fun one. But for me, I do have Lad McConkey higher on my board. So that's the reason why I did this. And I think McConkey can play Z. I think Jahan Dotson can play Z slash slot. Like they can work and interchange those guys around. Lad McConkey is a first round type of prospect for me. Just the movement skills are elite. He's going to be an, a, a troublesome separator. So you get Jaden Daniels all the weapons he needs with Scary Terry, Jahan Dotson, and now Lad McConkey. Tavondre Sweat, Texas Hook'em Horns going to the, the Bolts here at 37. Getting that run defender. Getting that going to make everybody's life easier and they need help desperately on the interior also changing it up a little bit because I go Chris Jenkins every single week and I think you know Tavondre Sweat I think Ruka Roro one of those guys right they need somebody on that interior very desperately I mean it's a matter of you got to get help on the interior. So I see them going after somebody in this draft class. And then on to the Tennessee Titans, where we're also going to find an interior defense lineman, right? We need another guy, right? You need a running mate to go along with Jeffrey Simmons. And that's going to be Rook. Oh, ro, ro, ro. Yeah, but we're going to get ourselves a stud interior. Dude, I'm really high on Rook. Ro, 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 if you can't tell, 38 overall. But I think this guy has got all the tools to be a really, really good interior defense. Like, he shoots gaps at a high level, get him on some stunts right away to get pressure. He's so athletic. He's so twitched up, too, for his size. He's so rocked up, man. He looks extremely strong. He's a good run defender. Really do like Ruka Ro Ro Ro. On to the Carolina Panthers. I'm going cornerback here. Yeah, I'm not going receiver. I think that, you know, between Mingo, you trade for Deontay Johnson, you still have Adam Thielen. You know, it's like, do they give up on Mingo right away as a second round pick? I don't think so. So I feel like they've got their starting three, and that's why I'm not going receiver at this point just yet. I need we need a cornerback. You lose Dante Jackson, you bring in Dane Jackson, but you know, it's decent starter, potentially starter money, right? It's like a five million dollar guaranteed sort of situation. But Lastner comes in, at least comes in for the slot, right? You got Troy Hill, but still, you need more help in the secondary. And you gotta figure on JC Horns also had trouble staying healthy. I mean, he's a beast. He's a true number one corner if he can stay healthy, but I'm going to add Kamari Laster, and I know he didn't put up the greatest 40 time. I know there's speculation it was 4-5, 4-6, somewhere in that ballpark. I think it was 4-5 from the rumors I'm hearing. But Lastner's tape, he plays really fast, and he's a phenomenal cornerback prospect. On to the Washington corner, Washington Commanders. I'm taking Patrick Paul, left tackle. They need a left tackle, right? I do like Brayden Daniels, and I, I am one that is optimistic that he does have potentially to be a starter. How do they feel? How does Adam Peters feel about that, though? Probably not likely to do that. He didn't draft him. So they're going to go get their guy, Patrick Paul, left tackle, plug him in with that size. He needs a little bit of work with his hands, but, you know, he can at least be a plus pass protector early in his career for Jaden Daniels. We go on. Edrin Cooper, linebacker, Texas A&M, two of the Green Bay Packers, get themselves some more help because they did let go to Vondra Campbell. You're going to need another player to go along with Quay Walker slash Isaiah McDuffie. So you get that here with that three tandem switching to more of a 4-3. Yeah, you're probably going to be a 4-2-5 mostly. However, you know, base packages, they're still going to need that third linebacker. And Cooper will end up being that, you know, number two with Quay Walker long term. On to the Houston Texans where they traded down, right? And, you know, you said what you want about the value. I think it was a good job by Nick Casario. It's a win-win. This is a definition of a win-win trade, right? Yes, you lose your first rounder, and maybe you didn't get, you know, multiple picks in exchange, but you get a second rounder, another premium pick, which you can desperately use, right? You can use all those premium picks while you only move down, you know, 18, I can't count, 19 spots, whatever it can be. So I still feel like this is a win and you maybe get the player that you wanted anyway. And Chris Jenkins, help that into your defense line. You're getting younger now. You lose Malik Collins in a trade. You lose Sheldon Rankins and Chris Jenkins. Much needed help. I think he can be a day one starter as well. On to Darius Robinson. Does fall a little bit, you know, in terms of, I know you're seeing him in first round mock drafts. I have him more as a round two guy. I like him a lot. I really do. And I think he's a guy that can play off the edge, can play on the interior. Ideally, I like him as like a five tech. And that's something where he can fit. I know it's Raheem Morris coming in, but they're going to still play a three, four. And he can fit in that Calais Campbell mold. He can play base four, three end. And he can play on the interior on more three, four packages. And, you know, you got Zach Harrison who can also do similar things. But I just think Darius Robinson, Zach Harrison, you're building up that youth on the interior defensive line with David Onyemana and Grady Jarrett and getting a little bit older there. So you're going to need some more youth. And I, I like Darius Robinson a lot as a BPA scenario. And as I was saying, he can also play off the edge, get you some more power and more pass rush there in general with Dallas Turner. Now you have really good pass rushers in your defensive line, getting home quick, right? For a team that, uh, you know, going to want their want to be able to get home with their front four, front five. On to the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going Enos Rakestraw Jr. Cornerback 
fact that super fluid corner, he can play man, play zone at a high level. He's super good in run support, too. He's one of the better run support corners. And somebody that's going to help you out on the outside, the perimeter, or at least give you some competition on the outside. But Jack Jones figures to be one of your starters. You lose Armique Robinson, Kendrick Karen Bennett, be ready to go. He hit some struggles last year. I mean, there's some upside for sure. I still feel like they need some help. Obviously, Nate Hobbs can, can play on the outside, too. But we put him in the slot, and I feel good about it. But Enos Rankstraw definitely gives you some help on the perimeter. Maybe they bring in a, another guy in, in, in the free agency market. It's just too early to tell right now. On to the New Orleans Saints. Keon Coleman. This was one of my original, actually, uh, draft picks for the New Orleans Saints, man, because he gives them a red zone threat, something that Derek Carr struggles with so much. And that's why I love Keon Coleman to this New Orleans Saints team. You give him that big play target in the red zone to you know, allow Derek Carr to be more efficient in the red zone, something that he has struggled with throughout his career. That's a reason why his field goal kickers are so good in fantasy. But I'm going to go get Keon Coleman as that red zone special. On to the Indianapolis Colts here. I'm going Junior Colson here, linebacker from Michigan, the Wolverine. You pair him. I mean, you do have EJ Speed, and EJ Speed definitely stepped up, and he's not a bad linebacker. But I'm thinking long term, you got to go ahead and improve that linebacking core. You got Jair Franklin. Now you pair him up with Junior Colson. And EJ Speed is your third linebacker. I'm feeling really good about that that linebacker. You have Justin Stratnard too, but I think that you still need more help in this linebacking core. And Junior Colson, to me, at this point, feel like it's a good value. On to the New York football giants. And after getting Brian Burns in free agency, which was unbelievable. I'm so pumped up to see him Brian Burns on this defensive line with Dexter Lawrence on KT. And now you add him Brandon Fiske onto this defensive line. To be that running mate, he's got such a good first step. I mean, you got some guys with some explosive traits. And this is going to be a fun defensive line for this New York Giant team. I cannot wait, man. On to the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're adding speed. All right, we're going to add that big-time playmaker. And look, you got Gabe Davis. I'm not super stoked about that free agent sign. I'm not saying Gabe Davis is a terrible receiver. He's good, right? He's inconsistent. And that's why I'm saying they still need to hit the wide receiver market, in my opinion. And, and Zay Flowers, or sorry, Zay Jones, not a bad receiver, but I think they could use an upgrade there. And not saying that Xavier Worthy is in that mold, right? But I think Keon Coleman could definitely be an option if he falls to this point. There's guys, you know, Jalen Polk, keep an eye out on. But Worthy, to me, adds a explosive element, a dynamic element into this offense, something that I think they're missing right now. To the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm going Ricky Pearsall here. And I figure on whether or not Tyler Boyd's back or you figure on if they do have have to trade T Higgins. I think they'll keep one of them. They're going to need another guy though. And I think Ricky Pearsall would be ideal. He put in that slot for Tyler Boyd and help them out much. You need to get another weapon. And Ricky Pearsall, such a good route runner. He just fits. I mean, he fits exactly what they would need to fill that Tyler Boyd void. On to Blake Fisher here for the Philadelphia Eagles. Get some more offensive line. Do a Howie Roseman situation here. Develop your right tackle of the future by Lane Johnson for a few years. Slash. He could even work in, compete with Tyler Steen at that right guard position. That's kind of the way I'm figuring. I do think Blake Fisher could move inside early on if he needed to. On to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to grab a receiver here, Troy Franklin. Add another playmaker. And I feel like he fits with Russell Wilson and his skill set with the deep ball. So I'm going to add and go in. Why not? Right? They need another playmaker after losing Deontay Johnson. We go to Michael Hall Jr., interior defense lineman from the Ohio State University. Much needed help on the interior, right? And you add another pass rusher to go along with Colby Turner. And hopefully we can hit again. And I think Michael Hall Jr. is a phenomenal athlete. He's got great length. And he's going to be an immediate pass rush impact for them. Yeah, he might struggle a little bit early on the run game. But I think they can, they can hold down their own for it here. And Michael Hall's got a lot of upside. Malachi Corley, Western Kentucky wide receiver. He gets there, Debo Samuel, right? They watch Debo Samuel, you know, a ton at San Francisco. So why not try to go steal those vibes, get themselves their own Debo Samuel? And he's going to be that slot playmaker for them, screen target to go along with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. And obviously you bring in Devontae Parker too, but I'd rather have him as a fourth receiver. Let's go on to Mason Smith. Interior defense lineman from LSU, a guy that I'm high on, and I think they're kind of overlooking him, just kind of like Irvin Dexter of last season. He's got the really good traits. He's got enough speed, too, to get the job done. Like, his hands are super strong. It's just a matter of utilizing those hands more creatively as a pass rusher, more pass rush moves, and he can be a really, really good player, very strong. And work on the leverage, of course, as a taller interior defense alignment. But they need more help in general. And, you know, kind of just filling short-term gaps with Shelby Harris back. On to the Miami Dolphins here. I'm going Christian Haynes. Interior offense alignment right guard. 
plug in for for Robert Hunt. Tough loss, but obviously the market that he got, it was going to outprice his Miami Dolphins team. But that's okay. We go get our right guard of the future here and Christian Haynes. Help them out right away as a day one starter. And then on to the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go add a guard here too. Dominic Pooney, Kansas, former left tackle. I mean, he took snaps at center too. So anyway, we're going to add the left guard to pair along. I mean, you got TJ Bass. You got Brock Hoffman. Who will end up winning the job? I mean, those guys looked solid when they were out there. Still want to add some more competition. I definitely think they're going to need some more. And Dominic Pooney can definitely do that. And then on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going with TJ Tampa. Why not? Get the name, right? It's perfect. But TJ Tampa, get that outside cornerback to pair along with Jamel Dean and then Christian Nizian in the slot. And whether or not McCollum, I mean, he just shows flashes that he was, you know, playing better last at the end of the season. So maybe they feel confident in that. Who knows? No matter what, though, I still feel like they need to add more help in the secondary. Javon Bullard, safety from Georgia for the Green Bay Packers. Now you got an elite secondary, right? I think that their grouping is really, really nice. Javon Bullard, Xavier McKinney, the versus with Bowler to be able to come in and play in the slot when he needs to, right? I think that that ability to play single high too with Bowler, it's it's there. Like he's not an elite speed guy, but I think he's got the instincts and you help at that back end and, and you're really in a good spot in my view. Max Melton, Melton my heart. I'm a huge Max Melton fan and uh, he's got all the tools, and, and you put him in here in D'Amico Ryan's system. I, I really like him in a, a zone scheme, too. I think he can fit man coverage as well, but I think in a zone system with his instincts that he has and the run support, he's really good. You could just line him up as a gunner, too, man. He's so good as a punt returner, a uh, punt blocker. Sorry, punt blocker is what I meant to say. And yeah, this guy, I really like Max Melton a ton. So athletic, covered Marvin Harrison really well. On to Xavier Leggett, wide receiver from South Carolina. They get themselves somebody with some big time acceleration and burst off the line and speed, should I say, right? And that Gabe Davis replacement on the outside. You got Khalil Shakir. You got Curtis Samuel. I like Curtis Samuel. I thought it was a good signing. You can play in the slot, but Khalil Shakir, like, is he going to be somebody that goes on the outside? Is, is Curtis Samuel going to be somebody on the outside? They need somebody with some size, some jump ball ability. I think that's what Xavier Leggett can bring on the outside in the perimeter. And then Marshawn Elon to the Detroit Lions. He is just what he fits is I think he fits exactly what they need, right? That power rusher off the edge, somebody that is super strong as a bull rusher and can just continue to get stronger at the next level. Good, solid speed. Like, he's not, you know, crazy. He's not Chop Robinson level, but he just checks off all the boxes there. And when he continues to work on his passer's tools, he can be a really good pairing with Aiden Hutchins. So you got Marcus Davenport now. So I feel like that's a nice, solid rotation of three. On to the Baltimore Ravens here at 62. I'm going Cameron Kitchen, safety from Miami, the Hurricanes. And, and I feel like they use three safeties, right? And Kyle Hamilton plays more of that hybrid role where he puts him in the slot. And I'm going to keep him there, right? He's so good at that role. He's the best in the league at that. And Cameron Kitchens can play in that Geno Stone mold, right? And you have Marcus Williams, Cameron Kitchens, Kyle Hamilton. Wow. that I mean, that's what I'm looking for, right? Cameron Kitchens felt like it was a value, what they can bring with him. They don't have to have that elite athleticism either. Onto the San Francisco 49ers. I'm going Renardo Green, cornerback from Florida State great tape, man. He is so good on an island. You get him in there, and whether or not he plays in the slot year one, or you, you keep Lenore over at the slot position while well, he was playing outside early and then had to move in, but nonetheless, I think that Renato Green could play in the slot. I think he's got enough physicality to man that position, and in long term, Javarius Ward's a free agent in 2020. I mean, everybody is. Lenore, uh, Thomas, and Ward, they're all free agents. I mean, you figure they're going to bring back probably Lenore, maybe somebody else, who knows, but I feel like they're going to need more help, and, and Renato Green can definitely do that. Then on to our final pick of the second round. I'm going Makai Wingo, interior defense lineman from LSU, and, and Mason Smith was the talked about guy, but this dude, Makai Wingo, is an underrated guy in this draft class, had an injury midseason. He is so difficult, right, to move off the line. He just is. He's really tough. He's got a great first step. It's That's the thing. When you got a really good first step as an interior defense lineman, guards, when you get right into your chest right away, it's so tough, even despite his size. I mean, he plays with great leverage, too. So that's another thing with Makai Wingo. It is so challenging as an interior defense al offense alignment to deal with a great first step. And that's why guys who have those type of Sheldon Rankins, are, they manage to ha hold on long time in the league, even if they're not super dynamic, you know, top end interior defense alignment. I think Makai Wingo is going to be a really good player. You put him next to Chris Jones. I feel very confident in his ability. On to round number three. I'm going with Chris Braswell, edge rusher from Alabama. And this team desperately needs edge rushers. I mean, you brought in Cable and Chase on. You brought in DJ Wunum. Wunum's a nice player. And I'm not saying Chase on can't be a good rotational player. They need more help off the edge. You got DJ 
Johnson, you did trade up for him. No matter what, they need more edge rushers. And Chris Braswell, I feel like it's a really good value at this point. On to the Arizona Cardinals. And with their first third round pick, I'm going with Peyton Wilson. They've got some guys, right? You got Owen Popo. You bring in some help to at the linebacker position. However, long term, I feel like, you know, Chris Barnes, um, also Kazir White's a free agent next year. They're going to need more help in this linebacking room. Mac Wilson is under contract for a few years. No matter what, though, I feel like they're going to need a little bit more help. And Peyton Wilson, just a really good value at this spot. On to Jonah Ellis, Utah edge rusher. Somebody that I, I think is super underrated in this draft class. The dude just knows how to get after the passer. And that's what I want. I don't care if he doesn't have elite size. He's got good enough length to get the job done. And with his creativity as a pass rusher, I know that he's going to be an impact. While, you know, may not be the super explosive, high length, you know, profile that you look for from a top end pass rusher. He's going to be a productive player. And he him along with Dorrance Armstrong. I like it. I really do. And then, you know, you got uh, Dante Fowler too. But on to the New England Patriots. I'm going Braylon Trice. Edge rush is kind of flying off the board here in the third round. And this is another scenario where the New England Patriots are kind of thin at the edge rushing position. Keon White can also play off the edge, but I feel like he's going to be more of that inside, you know, five tech type of role. And Braylon Trice gives you another pass rusher to go along with, uh, you know, Matt Judon and Josh Uchi on a one year deal. They're going to need more help for the future. Let's go on to Jonathan Brooks here, running back and hook him horns. I'm going to go add Jonathan Brooks because. I think they're going to want to run the ball, and he'd be a nice complimentary back with Gus Edwards, right? You got your power, you got your overall, you know, receiving. You know, I think Brooks is so well-rounded. His game is very versatile. I think he's got the explosive year to be a home run hitter, all-around game. He's a super young prospect. Yeah, yeah, ACL tear, but he's a super young player, as a saying. You can come back stronger. You see guys, especially at that age, come back stronger than ever, like Nick Chubb, etc. So I'm not super worried about that. And he's time to, he'll be ready for training camp. Jonathan Brooks, really talented. Talented player. On to the G man here at pick 70, Michael Penix Jr. I'm so pumped, man. This will be a really fun one. He can develop for a season, or hey, he may even start right away if Daniel Jones isn't ready or whatever, right? He may end up beating him out. <laughs> hey, I really like Michael Penix Jr. And you could be saying, well, Michael Penix Jr. probably going to go earlier than this. He may. I don't know. But Bo Nix, it's hard to say with a lot of teams filling the quarterback void in free agency. It's very hard to say. You know, we talked about this with Malik Willis and that class and Sam Howell. Those guys fell, right? Desmond Ritter, etc. So there's a real chance to me that some of these guys start falling into the second, third, or, you know, maybe the third round and further, right? I think there's a really good chance of that. Michael Penix Jr., you let him be that third quarterback behind Drew Locke early on, and hopefully he can develop into a starter. Let's go into the Arizona Cardinals back on the clock. And we're going to just Isaac. They've got a lot of free agents next year off the edge, right? So I'm feeling like guard deck, uh, D. McKeegee, um, you know, Javon Collins. They're all free agents next year. They're putting back some of them. You're going to need some more edge rushing depth for the future. And you figure Isaac can be that guy. On to Jalen McMillan, a wide receiver pick that I do every single week for the Jets, I feel like. But somebody that I'm a huge fan of. So, yes, it is what it is. But I'm a, I think he can be a phenomenal slot receiver for us. Just knows how to get open. He's a really good route runner. He's got kind of underestimated speed, too. And then we go on to Jaden Hicks. Safety from Washington State. And they're a little thin, right? I mean, you've got Melifanu. You've got... Um, Kirby Joseph, those can be your starters, but you're going to need a little bit of depth. And I think Jaden Hicks gives you that and definitely gives you some more versatility to in that back end and something that they're going to need. On to the Atlanta Falcons. I'm going with our developmental tackle of the future. Roger Rosengarden can kind of that right tackle position, Caleb McGarry, is still under contract this year, but next year he has an out in his contract, so you could move on. And Roger Rosengarden, to me, the athletic upside, I love the movement skills there with him. I, I think he's got all the potential, really good at the second level, can really be a nice developmental right tackle of the future for them. Let's go on to Cedric Van Pran, center for the Chicago Bears, day one, plug and play. I mean, you do have Sheldon, so it's like Coleman Sheldon could be a day one starter. He definitely can start, and he can also give you guard versatility if Cedric Van Pran isn't ready right away, but you at least have that good competition in, in for the future. Bo Nix is off the board. Bo knows. He goes to the Broncos. Stick and pick for the Broncos. No need to hustle and worry. Just, you know, take your time, Sean Payton. And why not? Take a chance here in the third round on Bo Nix, and I think he could be a really nice player for them in that quarterback room to at least compete with Jared Stidham and if they bring in a Ryan Tannehill, etc. Let's go on to Trey Benson and to the Las Vegas Raiders. Get some your right and a white, a nice running mate. And Benson and White, I love that duo. Benson showed a lot more in the receiving capability to this season, and obviously with the speed he has, is really, really 
really nice. On to Jatavian Sanders, tight end for the Washington Commanders. I'm just adding another playmaker. Why not? I mean, we got Lab McConkey, a Jatavian Sanders, trying to get as many playmakers for Jaden Daniels, get his blindside protector and Patrick Paul. So we're just trying to add a ton of weapons for this commander's offense and a new worked offense. I think it's going to be crazy. On to the Atlanta Falcons here at number 79. I'm going Mike Sanders still. Wolverine. Michigan Wolverine, should I say. Cornerback. Somebody that can play on the outside in certain schemes. And I think Raheem Morris' scheme, he could play on the outside. I, mean, I think Clark Phillips can line up on the outside. I like him there, actually. And you got A.J. Terrell as your size corner. So Sanders still can at least compete with D. Alford. Thinking about that position, just need a little bit more depth in general to spot the cornerback position, take another chance. Maybe they go with more size here. I think that's possible. But I also like Sanders still a lot. I felt like he was kind of BPA too. I mean, you could look at some other guys. There are some good cornerbacks on the board here at this point too. Like, I mean, DJ Jims doesn't have immense size. I mean, he probably could be a slot corner too. But Andrew Phillips maybe possibly. There's some guys to keep him. I actually like him as a slot too. I'm naming a lot of slot corners. But when you get into this mix, you're looking at a lot of slot guys. Maybe Kalen Carson could be an option too for that. And also the Cincinnati Bengals. Here I'm going with Theo Johnson, Penn State tight end. I mean, I mean, he whew, his combine was unbelievable. I mean, he was comparing him to Jimmy Graham for good reason. He's got that size, athletic profile to him, and with the right development, I mean, you'll Penn State tight ends from where they go, but they give themselves somebody to develop. Hi, Mike Lynchy for a season. On to the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Add that linebacker help that they desperately need, right? They lost everybody at the linebacker position, basically. I mean, bring in Jerome Baker. You got Tyrell Dotson. But, yeah, they need a future linebacker help. And Jeremiah Trotter, so it's fundamentally sound. I just love his game. Really good linebacker. Christian Mahogany to the Indianapolis Colts. At least develop and, you know, be a backup for Will Fries early on and long term, right? He's a free agent next year. So they're going to need some more interior offensive line help. And Ryan Kelly's going into a contract year too. So they may need to think about that as well. On to the Los Angeles Rams. I'm going Cedric Gray here, linebacker. Come in and be that one-two pairing with Ernest Jones. I mean, you got Rosenboom, but you definitely need somebody. I mean, no, they don't use a ton of two linebackers. However, I, I definitely see like, you know, with Shula coming in, Chris Shula might change some things at the D.C. Getting Cedric Cray, I really like him as a linebacker too. I think he's going to be a good coverage player. On to Chris Abrams' drain. Missouri cornerback, slot corner to compete there. Definitely think that they need a slot corner, and Abrams Drain fits the bill. Super physical, despite his size, great movement skills, and adds some much needed help. Now they got Dante Jackson, and we'll see about that. But anyway, Joey Porter Jr. on the outside. On to Blake Corum is going to come in as the running back to pair along with Nick Chubb. Obviously, Chubb getting a little bit older, going to need somebody else to at least be a good complement, and him and you know Jerome Ford, obviously. But Blake Corum, I really like his game, and I feel like this was a really good value, and he's a great power back too. I will say. He can handle a little workload. I think so. And then on to the Houston Texans. I'm going Roman Wilson here. I feel like, you know, at this point, just really good value. Why not take a chance on Roman Wilson? Add another playmaker. They were in on the Keenan Allen situation, so I'm going to try to add another wide receiver here. On to Braylon Allen, running back. Their final pick for the Cowboys in this draft, the four-rounder. I'm going to add a good, solid running back to come in here and give you a nice, uh, you know, much-needed help in this running back room. And I think Braylon Allen can handle the workload. He's a good receiver, too, despite, you know, his size. I think he's a pretty dang good receiver. They desperately need a running back in here with Tony Pollard gone. So you get him to come in and at least give you some competition in this running back with Rico Dowdle and, and also Deuce Vaughn. Let's go on to Elijah Jones, cornerback, Boston College. Comes over with Jeff Halfley in this case scenario. Has that press man, cover three type of ability in this defense that they're going to look for with that size and speed capabilities. On to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Mason McCormick. South Dakota State Jack Rabbits, you know they produce some good offense linemen. He's been a stalwart at that left guard position for them. And he they hey, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they need help. I mean, bring Suapata, but I think they desperately are gonna need some help. And they love to go up there some small school guys on the offensive line. On to Bucky Irvin, Oregon running back. Really like Bucky Irvin. I know he doesn't have the elite speed or nothing like that, but I feel like he'll be a really, really nice running back to go along with James Conner in this running back rotation. I know you got some other guys too, but Michael Carter. Long term, I feel like Bucky Irvin would be a nice addition. On to Caden Wallace, offensive lineman, right tackle there. Kind of the forgotten man at Penn State. Really athletic. I watched this tape, and I'm like, dude, this guy's a really good mover too. I mean, Olaf is a great mover, and so is Caden Wallace. So he can be a developmental tackle for this team. That's kind of the way I'm seeing it here, just as a developmental piece. And Zach Tom obviously gives you versatility on your offensive line. Next pick, Javon Baker, wide receiver from UCF. I feel like he's an underrated player in this draft class. Get another wide receiver. They're going to need at least a little more depth behind Trey Palm. On to the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going with Chris 
Christian Mahogany, where I realized I accidentally put Christian Mahogany twice in this draft. I would say you could supplement Indianapolis Colts. There's a lot of different interior offense linemen. I feel like there's a lot of guys in that, you know, that mid-round range that you could look at. So maybe you could find a center slash guard there too to help them out with Ryan Kelly. But with this pick for the Baltimore Ravens, Mahogany, I do like him. The fit over that right guard position. You have Andrew Voorhees, you got MAL, at least some competition on it. The Lumberjack or Cleveland, they're going to need more help on the interior offensive line. So that's why I double dipped here on the offensive line with Tyler Guyton and Christian Mahogany trying to really build these trenches. And then on to the San Francisco 49ers, I'm going to have Jalen Polk. I feel like he fell to this point and why not take a chance on Jalen Polk here at this spot? Really good hands. He's a hand catcher and somebody that can add a, a developmental piece behind Jawan Jennings, a really good blocker too. So you add another receiver, another playmaker where they got to get a little cheaper at that wide receiver position. The Kansas City Chiefs here at 95 and going Hunter Norris at center slash guard, right? I think he can play both. Absolutely. And somebody that with that big, powerful frame, he can be good interior depth, right? Their depth right now is really thin, obviously news, losing Nick Algretti. So I feel like they're going to still invest in the offensive line. I think they're going to pick up a free agent left tackle. So that's why I'm not ready to go left tackle at this moment. Plus, I like Gwena Morris. I think Donovan Smith will be back or they'll bring maybe Doc, David Bakhtiari in, something like that. I expect them to bring somebody in. It's still too early for me at that spot, but they need interior depth slash Joe Thune's getting a little bit older and then he'll be able to pay Trey Smith and um, Creed Humphrey. They're going to have to move to do something, right? So I think that that's why I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get some depth here on the interior. Zach Zinter, offensive guard here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kind of future Brandon Sheriff developmental for a season as he gets fully healthy. Next up, Bo Limmer. He can be a developmental piece of the center position or guard position. Give you some upgrade there with, Kuna, uh, uh, with Volgen at the left guard position and or long term at the center spot too. I think could be an option as well. On to Tanner Bortolini, center slash guard as well. He gives you that versatility from Wisconsin. Wisconsin for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I feel like he fits exactly what Arthur Smith's going to look for with that athleticism at the center position, and they don't really have anybody at the center position right now. So I think that Tanner Bortolini at least gives you some much-needed help in combination. Maybe they bring in a free agent here too. Let's go on to DJ James for the Rams. I love DJ James. He, you know, To me, he's a I have him as a back-end of the second-round guy, and it just depends on the size. Not every team is going to fall in love with his size. He's going to be very much scheme-dependent for some teams slash slot player, and they've got some guys with Colby Durant too, but I think he can get away with it in the Rams defense, and I just think he's a really good coverage player. Austin Booker, Kansas edge rusher, didn't you know have the combine that he was probably looking for, right? He said he wanted to go four sevens. Overall, still a good player, and I still think he's got a plenty of upside to be like a Dorrance Armstrong type of player down the road. So you get a guy that can compete with Dorrance Armstrong and more help off the edge. We're double dipping with Jonah Ellis, which they need help. And you got KJ Henry, but besides that, like I said, you got, need more help. On to round number four, Maurice Louis Fowl from Notre Dame. This guy, I feel like is underrated. I love this dude. I love watching this guy. It's not just the long hair. It is a little bit of long hair. But, dude, he is flying all over the field. He's a really good coverage player. And I think he's going to, in EJ Averro's defense, which a lot of zone dropping and stuff like that, I think he can fit that more perfectly to he can blitz at a high level. Really think he's going to be a dude that kind of comes out and sneaks up and is, ends up being a really good linebacker. And Shaq Thompson going into the last year of his deal, so you need to have more help there. On to Cole Bishop, safety. There's another scenario where they're going to need some more help in that safety room. So I think Cole Bishop can definitely provide that. You bring in Jenkins, Rashawn Jenkins from the Jaguars. You still have Julian Love. They need more help, though, in the back end. And Cole Bishop, I think with that versatility to play all around, helps you out a lot. Let's go on to Jermaine Burton for the uh, New England Patriots. Their wide receiving core is kind of set in my eyes in terms of money. You got a lot of guys under contract. You paid Kendrick Bourne. You got Juju Smith-Schuster still under contract. And Mario Douglas is pretty solid there, too. And you got take one forward and you still invested a pretty high pick so we'll see what happens how early they go receiver like that's kind of where I'm curious to see but Jermaine Burton could be a good route runner for them and add some more help for Drake May I think it's setting up to be a first round pick though next year for sure then we go on to Javon Foster more of a swing tackle that's kind of what I see they're going to need a swing tackle of the future right because you're getting a little bit older with uh, Kelvin Beecham and he's going to last year of his deal I believe so Javon Foster could maybe be that heir apparent at the swing tackle position and Andrew Phillips here from Kentucky. He's got elite athletic traits, really good movement skills. I actually see this guy as a great slot corner at the next level. I mean, you do have Jazir uh, Taylor, who can definitely hold his own there. You got uh, Leonard, too, who, you know, from Duke can play a player. But I feel like that Phillips could also play on the outside. He's a really athletic guy, can play man, can play zone. 
and he was asked kind of play a lot off coverage. So, but Andre Phillips, he played more man coverage too. This, but anyway, I think that Andre Phillips can be a really nice player for this Chargers rebuilding their secondary, whether it's on the perimeter or in the slot, because he's really physical too and run support, really good run support corner. And then Gabriel Murphy, edge rush from UCLA, adding some more pass rush because their depth is a little thin. It's like you got Arden Key and Harold Landry and, and Rashad Weaver, and like it's thin, right? It's really thin. You lose to Nico Autry, they're going to need more edge depth. They're going to need more defense line in general. On to Kate Stover. He was just good, too good of a value for this Giants team. And you figure on, too, that Darren Waller, I don't know how much longer he's going to play. So getting that, you know, that one-two punch with Daniel Bellinger for the future. And Stover's a really nice, reliable tight end. DeMar Glaze, offensive guard. Maryland moves over here to the Minnesota Vikings. I do still think Dalton Reisner will be back. But no matter what, I think they're going to need more depth on the interior. And Glaze looks pretty good at the senior ball. I know he's a former tackle there at Maryland. But I think he's going to move inside a guard and help this team out tremendously on the interior. Then we go on to Malik Washington from Virginia, add another playmaker for Kirk Cousins. And he can at least compete with Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore, remember, only under contract, I think, for one more season. Don't quote me on that. I think it's one more season. Maybe two more. Who knows? But Malik Washington at least gives you that fourth receiver. And I love his game a ton. He has really got great shiftiness and great hands. Then we go on to Christian Jones. Right tackle, at least to develop behind Trey Pipkins for a season. With Pipkins still under contract, it's tough to get out. You really can't. You lose money, I believe, if you get out of it right now. But he can be a guy that develops for a season behind behind him and then ends up hopefully being the long-term right tackle to go along with Rashawn Slater. Then we go on to Kitten Oladapo, safety from Oregon State for the New York Jets. Get themselves that heir apparent there for the safety room with Chuck Clark on a one-year deal, I believe, under contract one more season for them, bringing him back. But obviously coming off an injury, you're going to need at least a little bit of depth. And Kitten Oladapo, I think he's a really underrated safety, somebody that I, that gives you that super ability to come down in the box when needed to, but also play up top if, if you need to with his instincts. They're really good ball skills. On to the Raiders. Well, I'm going to go Brendan Rice, right? They had Jerry Rice for a little bit, right? And we're going to go get Brandon Rice's son here to be a nice little fourth wide receiver for them. And you got to figure at some point, Devontae Adams, you might have to get a little cheaper at the position. Jacoby Myers, still under contract, of course. You keep those guys around. You got Trey Tucker developing in as that fourth corner, some speed there. But Brennan Rice at another guy as that fourth dude for the future. And then Tez Walker, wide receiver from North Carolina. This is another thing where Baltimore Ravens, you need more help at the wide receiving core, right? At least is some depth. So Nelson Aguilar, you know, playing the slot for them and can definitely hold that down. But I like adding Tez Walker as that fourth weapon for them. Tylen Wallace too. Muhammad Kamara, edge rusher from Colorado State. This team just needs edge rushing depth, right? And I think Kamara can bring that with Walker, with uh, with Josh Allen. So I think that you have that with Kamara with that explosive burst. I think he'd be a great situational pass rusher. And you can move Trayvon Walker inside too on pass rushing downs and put Kamara on the outside too. Jarvis Brownlee, he can be a slot. I think he can also play on the outside in certain schemes, but I feel like he can develop into a slot corner. I mean, figure on DJ Turner. Hopefully he can be the outside guy with Cam Taylor Britt. Those are kind of your two outside guys. And Jarvis Brownlee ends up being the future for Mike Hilton, who is still in a contract, but long term. On to Audrey Gestime. You get that power back. You do have Tank Bigsby. I mean, I'm still, you know, I like Tanks Bigsby, but I think Audrey Gestime, really good power back, and, and you at least add some more help, more competition to go along with Travis Etienne. And then on to the Indianapolis Colts here. I'm adding more secondary help. Kalen Bullock could be much needed help in that back end. At least give some competition with Ronnie Thompson, right? And that's kind of the way I'm seeing it here. So Bullock comes in here with Nick Cross, and Nick Cross can play all around the field. I feel like he's at his best in the box, too. And, and same thing with Ronnie Harris. Like, he was kind of like a hybrid linebacker for them. So I think Kalen Bullock is more of that rangy Malik, uh, Malik Hooker type of replacement that they're looking for. On to Ben Sanat, tight end from Kansas State. Really good tape there at Kansas State. I just feel like he's going to be a nice number two tight end. And you have Noah Fant back, but you lose your other tight ends. And I think that Ben Sinat can be a really good backup for, for him, Noah Fant. Leonard Taylor, just BPA for the Pittsburgh Steelers at this point. I know he didn't have a great combine, didn't have a good offseason in general process. And the tape this year was very up and down. I still like him. I still believe in him. And maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers can get the best out of him as a developmental piece to go with Keanu Benton, trying to get a little bit younger. Larry Ogunjobi, Cameron Hayward are getting older now at this point. Let's go on to Javon Solomon for the Eagles. Getting another situational pass rusher. They can play on the outside, can drop into coverage. He's got an interesting build, but you know, hey, the Eagles are, are very familiar with this, and you get another pass rusher to be at least in rotation. Remember, you're getting a little bit older. They're looking to move on from Hassan Reddick, possibly Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham last season, so you're going to need more help to go along with Bryce Huff. Let's go on to Tommy Eichenberg, the iceberg. Let's go. Iceberg getting in here for the Denver Broncos. Alex Singleton, one more year on his deal. 
I think that they could use some more help in here to at least pair along with Drew Sanders for the future. Let's go on to McKinley Jackson, interior defense alignment for the Chicago Bears. I feel like maybe, you know, your long-term Andrew Billings type of replacement. I love his first step. He's got a great first step, and I feel like he's going to be one of those guys, again, falls underneath the cracks and ends up just being a really solid 10-year player that, you know, kind of moves from team to team, but definitely finds a spot as a really good interior run defender. Uh, then we go on to Darian Taylor Demerson, Texas Tech, safety, super athlete, needs some time to develop, and that's okay, right? You got Jamie Ward coming back from injury, you got Jalen Petrie, but now you get that developmental piece who has that versatility to be able to play in the slot too and cover and be in the back end and do what you need to do as a coverage player. On to the San Francisco 49ers here, and we're going to go Dwayne Carter, interior defense lineman from Duke, and they've got some guys, right? But they need more youth. I still feel like, you know, with Kali Davis, like they could add some more depth, more youth, so I'm going to go ahead and add Dwayne Carter. Quarter, you know, Malik Collins coming in. It's fine. Like, he's definitely good. He's a good player and, and whatnot. But I feel like they need some more help long term. Let's go on to Cornelius Johnson, wide receiver. Add some more help at this wide receiving core because, like, you know, you got some dudes, right? You, you invested a little bit in it and whatnot. But Trey Palmer, somebody that definitely can help you out with some speed and special teams. Cornelius Johnson adds a little bit more size, especially if they're going to want to play uh, Chris Godwin more in the slot. So I'm feeling like, hey, give Cornelius Johnson a really good athlete too to be uh, some more help on the outside with Mike Evans. Let's go on to Fabian Lavette. Really good run defender. He can kind of be that point with TJ Slayton on the interior of the defensive line and at least give you some more help on that interior front as some rotational basis because you figure on Carl Brooks can also play off the edge. Colby Wooden can also play off the edge, give you some edge depth, especially with Kingsley, Egnagbari being out probably for a little bit in the season. Lavette, really good run defending guy with the no gloves, the no glove bandit. I like him a lot. Let's go on to Walter Ruse from Oklahoma, left tackle. Really nice backup for this Washington, for this Houston Texan team. And I feel like with Charlie Heck coming back, that's fine. Like he can be a swing tackle early on, but long term, they're going to need a good swing tackle with the injuries that they've had. And Walter Ruse hopefully can be that with that size, length profile that he has. And he was really solid from a technique standpoint, too, from my eyes. On to the Buffalo Bills, I'm going with the interior offense line, Isaiah Adams. Going to do some more depth, right? You got Donovan Edwards. I feel like he can start. And you got uh, Connor McGovern coming back, who can play in the center position. Maybe we draft a center here, too. I just didn't want to force a center pick. So I went with kind of the best interior offense lineman available. And Isaiah Adams, for me, was that. And then on to the Minnesota Vikings. Skull, skull, skull with their last pick. I'm going all day, Ray. I am such a huge fan of all day, Ray. Ray Davis from Kentucky. I had to get him in this draft. And not just not just that. Like, I feel like he'd be a really good one-two punch with Aaron Jones this season. And you have Ty Chandler as well. So, like, that's a really good tandem of running backs. You cannot give Aaron Jones a massive workload at this point in his career. You cannot say, hey, we're going to give him 800 snaps and just rock. He He's a guy at this point that's like 400, 500. You got to keep Aaron Jones fresh. So, all day, Ray, Ty Chandler, I feel like they're complementary skill sets. Ray Davis is that power, explosive power that he brings. I like him a lot. On to the Baltimore Ravens here. I'm going near my Pritchard, Auburn corner. And somebody that I think gives you a lot of versatility could play in the slot also for this team. At least give you some more competition where they Darius Washington, Kyle Hamilton, but I feel like long term he can play on the outside. You know, Brand Stevens going into a contract year. I think he's got really good movement skills and good athleticism in general. Good and solid corner to develop. The 49ers. I'm going Matt Con Galavez here from Pittsburgh. Get your tackle, at least to develop, and somebody to compete with Colton McKivix at that right tackle position. He actually has left hand, left uh, right tackle ability, but uh, you go ahead and try to take a chance here. I mean, ideally, would have probably liked to have gotten a right tackle a little bit earlier, but the way the board fell, just kind of shaked it up a little bit differently in this draft. So that's my only maybe nitpick with my own mock draft here is, you know, maybe I should have gone tackle a little bit earlier. On to the Kansas City Chiefs, the ship. We're going to add Will Shipley, that receiving element, whether that's a Bucky Irvin, a Marshawn Lloyd, Will Shipley. Go get somebody like that to pair along with Isaiah Pacheco. Really like that combination. On to the 49ers. I'm going Malik Mustafa. They at least need some depth at the safety position, right? Plus Hufunga, I love that name. Hufunga is going into a contract year, coming off the ACL injury. You got to figure on, at least, at least need a little bit more depth. Probably you resign him. And Jair Brown. So I feel like Melissa Mustafa can also play a little bit more in the deep end of things, be more of that free safety, at least possibly. I think he can develop into that mold. So you get more help at that safety position to be that rotation of three. Let's go on to Brandon Dorless, interior defense lineman from Oregon. Uh, they need more depth on that interior defense line, right? You got your starters in Ed Oliver and Daquan Jones, but 
like you can't keep those guys out all the time, right? That's the problem that they had. Like they couldn't keep those guys fresh. I think Brandon Doyle can be a really nice rotational piece for the team. Final pick of the draft. I got to end it with a doozy. Spencer Rattler. The Rattler is going to come and finish off this draft. Mr. Irrelevant in this four round mock draft, but he can come in and be a developmental piece behind Tyra Taylor. Just take the, you know, let the chill, let him kind of develop for a few years and hopefully behind Aaron Rodgers and be at least a long-term backup for the team and maybe see what you have down the line with Spencer Rattler. He's got the tools. If you can work out some of those, you know, still the decision-making woes and things like that with the right development, who knows? So I'm going to take a chance at the quarterback position. That is going to do it here for the four-round mock draft. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree. Definitely some interesting ones. We're going to be doing a trades mock draft here very soon. That'll be up next. Can't wait, though, for this next week, this week of free agency. More things to play.